As I've been sick over the past week, I've not been in the best shape to play a deck that requires a lot of thinking, which is why I decided to play the new Red Green Minskin Boo deck that recently won a big online legacy tournament. This deck is all about your 4 drops. Having 4 Minskin Boo, 4 Caves of Chaos Adventurer, and 4 Undermountain Adventurer, you can have some explosive turn 1s. As we have access to degenerate mana in this deck, we will also be using it to disrupt the opponent on early turns. We have access to 4 Chalice of the Void, 2 Trinisphere, and 2 Magus of the Moon, which allows us to completely lock out the opponent against a good amount of decks in the format. We are playing Magus of the Moon instead of Blood Moon because you can find it from Once Upon a Time, which is also just an all-star addition to the deck because it digs deep for your soul lands and your threats when you need it in certain opening hands. I think this deck is very well positioned in the metagame right now, and as always, a cyborg guide is available for this deck up on my Patreon. The first match of this video that I want to showcase is just a funny one. I keep my opening 7 because we have a Once Upon a Time and a Turn 1 Chalice of the Void with Chrome Mox so that we can play Fable of the Mirror Breaker if we want to, and the opponent mulligans to 4. So I think you can all see where this game is going with a Turn 1 Chalice of the Void, Turn 2 Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Let's just play the Chalice and see what happens. I once upon a time into an ancient tomb, play the Chalice of the Void, and it instantly resolves and the opponent concedes on their upkeep. Going into boarding, I wasn't quite sure what they were on. I was suspecting Reanimator, but I just decided to take out two Fury for two Blood Moons and not bring in the Fairy Macabre. Going into game two, we keep a nice turn on Chalice of the Void again, and the opponent mulligans down to four again. So thinking that I'm about to get a free win, let's see what they can do on their first turn. With the opponent knowing I don't play Force of Will, they Entomb Atraxa into their graveyard and then use Reanimate to put Atraxa into play. Now if you don't know, Atraxa is a new addition to the format, definitely a busted one, because now they instantly get to draw a load of good cards, and here I'm just dead on this board. Now that we know they're on Reanimator for sure, we can take out all of the cards that basically do nothing against them and bring in the Fairy Macabs, Run Afoul, and Veil of Summer to disrupt them as much as possible. Going into game 3, we have to mulligan down to 5, and I keep the 5 because we have Once Upon a Time, which can find the Fairy Macabre, as well as we have 4 mana. Now the Once Upon a Time does not find that card, but we can play our Undermountain Adventurer turn 1 to venture into the dungeon. Now it wouldn't have mattered if we found the Fairy Macabre, because they did have the Unmask, and then they reanimate an Atraxa to win the match. We cannot beat a Resolved Atraxa, and it refills their hand, which also makes our hand very hopeless. Going into the next round, we're on the draw and have a potential turn 1 Minskin Boo or turn 1 Chalice of the Void. After the opponent plays a Polluted Delta, I decide to go for the turn 1 Chalice on 1 because I'm suspecting my opponent to be on Delver and I want to play around Daze. After naming Barbarian with Cavern of Souls, I put Chalice of the Void on the stack but they have the Force of Will so I'm glad I didn't cast the Minskin Boo. With nothing left to do, we say go and they fetch a Volcanic Island play another land, and ship it straight back to us. But like an absolute beast, we find City of Traders off the top. This now lets us cast the Minskin Boo and be able to pay for days or even potentially two dazes. Minskin Boo resolves, and something very important is that the Enter the Battlefield trigger from Minskin Boo allows Delver players to bolt it in response to the trigger. So fortunately, they don't have the Lightning Bolt and we can attack in with a 4-4 Hamster. From here we get the sweet sweet taste of Delver victory and we move on into boarding. Going into boarding I bring in 2 Run Afoul and 2 Power Blast and I like to take out the 2 Magus of the Moon and the 2 Undermountain Adventurers just because initiative is not that great against them because they have a load of flyers and also Blood Moon isn't great because they just have a load of basics. And game 2 starts off great, we have a really nice opening hand with a once upon a time. The opponent's on a slow draw, just Volcanic Island go, and we find a Caves of Chaos Adventurer off the top, so we're going to start with a Once Upon a Time before we do anything. It finds two more City of Traders, which is interesting, and we're going to be just taking the Simeon Spirit Guide because we already have a Fury. This lets us turn on Caves of Chaos Adventurer, which is nice because if it resolves we get the initiative. Something to note though is that if I did have access to green mana here, then I would play the Undermountain Adventurer because that doesn't get lightning bolted. Now I'm sure many of you are wondering, well why did I board out Undermountain Adventure if I'd rather play it on turn 1? It's because Caves of Chaos Adventure is more easily casted on turn 1. Anyways, the opponent brainstorms in response, and somehow the Caves of Chaos Adventure resolves. 
Thinking I hit the jackpot because my opponent didn't have the daze, I instantly realized that I evaluated the matchup wrong because they play Lotus Petal, so they're actually on show and tell. On our upkeep, we get to put two plus one plus one counters on our Caves of Chaos Adventurer, and we go to combat. This is because when Caves of Chaos Adventurer attacks, it exiles the top card of our library, and we may play it this turn. Now, luckily, it finds a Cavern of Souls, so now we can cast our Undermounted Adventurer with the ability to not be countered. Now, remember I said I was sick during the recording? Well, I have no clue why, but I clicked Barbarian as the creature type for Cavern of Souls and then realized that Undermounted Adventurer is a giant warrior. So I'm just gonna rule this off that my head was spinning, but that is a very bad play. Despite this, the opponent decided that they were done with this match and they concede the game. Going into the next round, we're on the play with yet again a turn one initiative creature. However, this time we have Cavern of Souls to make it uncounterable. The opponent starts off with Noble Hierarch and passes back the turn. Making sure that I name the right card with Cavern of Souls, I play that and then cast my Chrome Mox, which is actually a completely bad sequence because now the opponent Force of Wills my Chrome Mox, so I don't have the mana. While that is unfortunate, somehow the opponent does not have a second land or a spell to cast, so they attack and pass back, and now we can both Fury the Noble Hierarch and then play an uncounterable initiative creature. From here, the opponent concedes the game, and we're fortunate that the missed sequence didn't matter. Going into boarding, I'm not a big fan of Magus of the Moon because they will have a lot of creature base removal, and I want the Fiery Confluence in because it's just a lot of damage and can sweep the board if they have a load of creatures. Going into game two, we have a very good opening hand with the turn one Chalice of the Void. The opponent starts off the game with a Green Sun Zenith for zero, getting a Dryad Arbor out of their deck. With an Ancient Tomb off the top, the best thing I can do here is just play the Chalice of the Void, and it resolves. After passing back, the opponent has a Sylvan Library for 2 mana and attacks me for 1. Like an absolute beast, we find the Cavern of Souls off the top of the deck. This will now let me play the Undermounted Adventurer, and with the Chalice on 1, they cannot plow us to take back the initiative. The opponent's Sylvan Library triggers in their draw step, and they pay for life to draw one of the cards. This allows them to Prismatic Ending my Chalice of the Void because they're paying 2 mana, meaning its CMC is 2 on the stack. From here, they can cast one mana spell, so they ponder, and then they play a basic planes and pass back. I decide to forge my Undermountain Adventurer, which I actually think might be a mistake here. My logic was if they have swords to plowshares, I will still want to trap them to deal them 5 damage. Now that we draw an Elvish Spirit Guide, my logic was I'm going to attack with my Undermountain Adventurer, and then cast my two creatures in hand, but the obvious plow that they have blows me up from this strategy, so I'm just going to have to cast my caves and hope that it gets there which it does. I now trap the opponent, making them lose 5 life and hoping that they can't deal with this creature on the board so that they can take back the initiative. I think it would have been much better last turn to not attack with my 5 power creature and just play the Elvish Spirit Guide and the Caves of Chaos Adventure before combat, so then I would have 2 blockers. Anyway, somehow the opponent does not find a removal spell from a Ponder in the Sylvan Library, and we find a Fiery Confluence and a land off the top of the deck. Now, despite flooding, we don't have two red sources to be able to cast the Fiery Confluence. So here I'm going to attack first because either land or spell is good off the top of the deck. Well, that land is not good because that's a colorless land. Somehow we still managed to find a non-red source off the top. So here the best thing we can do is cast the Elvish Spirit Guide, say go and hope that they can't take the initiative from us this turn. And that completely goes out the window when they play an Ice Fang Kotal, which has flying. Now the opponent uses Sylvan Library, attacks in, takes the initiative, gets a basic island out of their deck, plays it, and then follows up with an Uro. But surprisingly, after they resolve the Uro trigger, they have Grist the Hunger Tide. So that lets them destroy my Caves of Chaos Adventurer and leaves me with an Elvish Spirit Guide. Yet again, we draw another Soul Land off the top of the deck. I've almost drawn every Soul Land at this point. But what we're going to do is attack the opponent's face and take back the initiative so that we get the throne. If you don't know what the throne does, it's the If you don't know what the throne does, it's at the bottom of this dungeon and it lets me reveal the top 10 cards of my library and put the best creature from them onto the battlefield with three counters and hexproof. And we find a fury which lets me kill the Ice Fang Kotal and the Grist and it's a 6/6 double strike hexproof until my next turn. After this, we pass back, and the opponent uses Sylvan Library. From here, they escape out the Uro from their graveyard to both gain 3 life, draw a card, and put a land into play, which they decline to do. After they pass back, we can search for a basic mountain on our upkeep, which will allow us to use this Fiery Confluence. 
Fiery Confluence is a lethal burn spell here, so I attack in, they block with the Uro and bounce it to their hand with Caracas, and I'm instantly going to play this Mountain and slam the Fiery Confluence. Richard Garfield wanting to make this match as close as possible, they do have a Force of Negation, so we're going to have to play this Elvish Spirit Guide and pray. The Elvish Spirit Guide resolves and we pass back the turn. The opponent uses Sylvan Library on their upkeep, plays an Uro, puts a land into play and passes back the turn. After forging my Elvish Spirit Guide and attacking in, they have a Swords to Plashers on my Fury, which is unfortunate. Here I'm just going to play my Chalice of the Void on 2, as they have a lot of 2 drop cards in their deck that would be annoying in this spot. Now the absolute worst thing happens here, the opponent uses Ice Fang Kotal and then Force of Will on my Chalice of the Void. Now I'm losing the initiative so I can't trap the opponent on my next upkeep, and I'm giving them back the initiative too. To make things even worse, they have a natural order to get Atraxa out of their deck. I was feeling super hopeless in this spot and I was just going to take one more draw step and then concede. But like an absolute beast, we rip Caves of Chaos Adventurer off the top to slam that, get the initiative back, trap the opponent's face and win the match. And guess what? It worked. To finish off the league, we beat Cephalid Breakfast in round 4 because of Magus of the Moon completely locking them out of the game. And then in round 5, we sadly lost to Mono Black dark depths because they had a fast card in the great creator in the third game overall i really like this deck and the fact that i was super sick and my brain was throbbing this whole league and i still managed to do decent makes me think this is a top contender in the legacy format right now as always i'll open the chest for you gambling degenerates and we got a nice nice run and six so don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed the video